Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to this week's episode of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys joining us for today's seminar. Always uh, grateful to have y'all's presence here. Guys, today we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be giving one of those seminars today that um, a lot of people tune out of um, because we're gonna be talking about um, advanced techniques for locating bass throughout the year. Now, one of the things I found out about doing YouTube videos is anytime I do a video that has to do with bass behavior and mood and personality or actually locating and finding fish, about half of the viewers tune out. Most viewers want to hear a quick fix tip on lures and colors and that type of stuff, and that's all fine and good. But I've always said that if you want to make quantum leaps in your fishing skills, you have got to be a master of understanding seasonal patterns and seasonal movements and how to locate fish under a wide range of conditions. So um, we're going to have a, a comprehensive uh, uh, little conversation into this. This is going to be one of those videos that's good just to plug it in if you're driving your car because you're just going to be looking at my face the whole time. I don't have anything to show you besides that and what's in my in my mind that I'm going to share with you guys here. Um, also, guys, before we get started here, I just want to do our weekly uh, housekeeping reminders here. Uh, if you guys like the what's going on with advanced bass fishing and you're getting something out of these long seminars, um, best thing you can do is to go to, into my description of this video and click on my links, especially my Tackle Warehouse link, guys. If you guys use that Tackle Warehouse link to purchase your fishing equipment, the channel gets a small percentage of any purchase you make, so that's a great way to support the channel. Same with using my Solar Bat Sunglasses links, um, subscribing to the channel, uh, becoming channel members, and following the other channels I got, Intuitive Angling and The Fishing Teacher. So. If you guys are interested in giving back to the channel, that's, those are all good ways. And also we have a Patreon page. You can, uh, you can support the channel through that too. So much appreciated with that. Okay guys, the first thing I want to talk about here when we're talking about um, seasonal patterns and how to locate bass is I want, I want to clarify this. And this is, this is something we find ourselves sort of in a new world regarding fishing with the advent of forward facing sonar that has completely taken over fishing. So, um, most of what you read about now in fishing, it all has to do with forward facing sonar and you're not, people aren't learning anything with that because you're dealing with fishing little bitty minnow baits and occasional jerk baits and looking at a screen the whole time. There's not, the, the fish that those people fish with, for with forward facing sonar, that's a different group of fish. Those are they're, they're open water nomadic roamers out there. And it's sort of like, it's the same thing, fish and bass and people are the same thing. It's like some people are country folk, they like to live in the country away from everybody. Some people prefer the city, some people prefer the suburbs, and it's the same with bass. Some bass are open water roamers. They live out there most all year long. In fact, I think some of those don't even come to the bank to spawn. Some bass sort of live in the mid depths and some bass live on shallow targets all the time. So what I am talking about is I'm talking about focusing on the traditional bass fishing methods. We're not going to be, we're, I'm not going to have anything applicable to live scope here. It's going to be for shallow water target fishing or those mid depth ranges, you know, things within say 30 foot in water, 30 foot of water and less every things that you can find and utilize with nothing but 2D sonar at the most out there. So I want to clarify that uh, from that standpoint there. But what I want to do here is I want to um, I want to I want to divide this up into seasons as far as how to locate bass through different courses of the season, and that's probably the best way to do it as far as structuring it. And even not, even then, it's difficult because if I talk about finding bass in the winter time down at Lake Okeechobee in Florida, <clears throat> it's going to be completely different than finding bass in the winter time, like uh, you know up at. Uh, say Kentucky Lake and Tennessee and Kentucky up there. It's just a completely different world. So given that, I can't, I can't cover everything out there. So I'm gonna to try to cover the type of water that the majority of the people in the country fish. And that, that is typical man-made man impoundments that have traditional structure like um, you know rocks, rocky banks, lay down timber, docks, some grass, all that type of stuff. So that's sort of what we're gonna center uh, the, the uh, topic on today. Now, one of the things when you're talking about the how to locate a bass <clears throat> and seasonal movements and patterns <clears throat> is you have to realize that <clears throat> everything does not work all the time like it should. It's like it's one of the most frustrating things about bass fishing for a lot of people is they can't they don't have enough control over it. And that lack of control 
frustrates people because you can read stuff and you can watch YouTube videos, but if you go to try to apply it on the water, a lot of times it won't work, or sometimes it will, maybe sometimes it won't. So one of the things that you have to really understand before you dive into any aspect of fishing, especially um, how to locate a bass, is that you're, it's not going to work every single time anything that you do out there, but you have to sort of put yourself in the high percentage areas and then you can make adjustments on that once, you know, you start catching a few fish out there. So just keep that in mind as we go through this here. Okay, let's talk about how to locate bass in the winter time. Now, the winter time, here's what I sort of classify winter fishing is um, I gauge it by water temperature in the relative proximity of the water temperature rising or excuse me, cooling down to its lowest point and then warming up from there. So let's say for example, in January, which is the dead of the winter for most you know, people across the country, let's say for example, your water temperature bottoms out at 45 degrees. The winter months, in my opinion, as far as how to locate bass in the winter would be something where the water temperature fell within like a five to seven degree range of its lowest point. So when that water temperature first starts getting down around 50 degrees, I consider that the start of the winter. And then when it drops down to like 40, 45 degrees, that could be midwinter. And then when again, when it starts to warm up, say February, early March, something like that, you know, back up into around 50 degrees, that's sort of the late winter. So every season out there has pretty much three distinct seasons within each season. It's like you got early winter, middle of winter, late winter, you got early spring, mid spring, late spring. So there's like three subsets of times of the or of uh, seasons within each particular season so first of all when you're trying to locate a bass during the winter months a lot of it has to do with weather patterns um, weather patterns change year after year weather patterns are not the same as climate weather patterns are something that change you know consistently throughout year after year after year based upon you know, jet stream and all that type of stuff that comes through. So you may have one winter that is like exceptionally cold, next one normal, next one a little bit above normal. And that all affects the water temperatures and the areas that you need to look for the bass in. So here is sort of my general thumb about how I go about looking for bass in the winter time. The first thing you have to do is you have to identify the key types of cover in your lake. Now, for the most part, the cover you're going to have is going to be either rock, wood, or grass for the most part. And, the, and those can all vary. It's like the rock can be, you know, it could be a, a desert lake like Lake Mead, or it could be a, a gravelly clay lake like Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. Uh, you may have a lot of timber or a lot of wood in a particular lake like Lake Seminole in Georgia. And then you may have a lake like... Uh, Lake Chickamauga or, or you know, Lake, Lake Seminole or Lake uh, Sam Raven or something like that that does have some grass in it that is not a Florida lake out there. So as far as the, uh, you know, how you go about finding those fish, a lot of it is depending upon the cover that you have out there. Now, when you're talking about locating bass um, in the winter time of the year without using live scope, you have to realize that in the winter time, you have two different populations of fish that live in that shallow to mid range all year long, all winter long out there. You have the bass out there that live like in less than 10 feet of water, normally on the bottom. And then you have some bass that live out in deeper water that normally either are on the bottom or they're suspended out over that deeper water relating to structures like main lake points and secondary points and something like that. And the amount of bass that use the bottom or suspend in the winter time depends upon the species of fish that you have and the water clarity. The cleaner the water that you have and the more of a mixed species you have, like a mix of smallmouth, largemouth spotted bass, they tend to be a lot more fish that are suspended. Um, and the dirtier the water, the, the more stained the water is, um, the more of those fish tend to be bottom oriented and relate to the bottom and relate to structure. So that right off the bat should give you a good indication of what you need to do to locate the fish based upon, you know, the water clarity and the type of structure. Um, a little bit with the water temperature too. The water temperature plays a role too, but I think really that the, from my, from my experience in fishing in the winter, as far as locating fish, it has, it has more to do with the water clarity and the species of bass than it does 
the, uh, the, the actual water temperature, excuse me, then it has to do with the time of year or the water temperature out there. So, because for example, it's like, if you, if you say December is the winter time where you're fishing, like here in, in Missouri, winter time, it doesn't matter if the water is um, 48 degrees or 55 degrees in December, there's always going to be those fish that I just talked about. There's going to be some fish that are suspended out of those points. There are going to be some fish on the bottom on the points or shallow based upon the lake that I'm fishing. If I'm fishing a lake like Truman Lake here in Missouri that has off-colored water, I'm going to be looking for those fish to be more on the bottom. If I fish a lake around the house here like Bull Shoals Lake, Clearwater Lake, they're going to be suspended more. Now, when you're talking about locating bass that are not live scope fish, and when I talk about suspending fish, I'm not talking about open water roaming fish. Suspending fish that I'm talking about in traditional bass fishing means they suspend and they move around structure and they follow bait. And for the most part, one of the things that you really have to focus in on during the winter months, um, especially as it gets colder and colder, is they like to move to a little bit more vertical structures. That's why your steeper banks, uh, your bluff banks, your points that drop off quick, all those type of structures like that are gonna be really good areas to begin your search for if that water temperature is at, that's at its coldest point. Now, <clears throat> leading up to that, <clears throat> and also on the other end of it, when those fish are starting to get on the, the tail end of it and starting to warm up, <clears throat> excuse me, those fish can be on flatter structures. So say for example, in December, if I go out there and fishing, um, the water you know, temperature is 55 degrees, I may catch some on some flatter banks and some pea gravelly, chunk rock type banks, maybe throwing a wiggle ward or a crankbait. And then again, you know, as that water temperature drops and we get some bad cold fronts where the, water, where the air temperature gets down in the single digits, those fish, those same fish are gonna move more to those vertical structures, the bluff banks, the deeper points, steep banks and stuff like that. And then once again, as it warms up in the winter time, they tend to move to a little bit flatter areas like that. So within those three areas in the winter time, here's what I look for and here's what I look for to locate bass. First of all, in the early and late winter, I try to focus on major creek arms. I think there's, I think in the early and late winter, there's a lot of fish that are moving in and out of those major creek arms. So they're, th that's the first area that I look for. What I'm looking for within those major creeks is I'm trying to identify the structures that the fish are relating to at the time that I'm there. And that totally depends on your lake. If I'm fishing a lake like here at Table Rock Lake in Missouri, I'm gonna be concentrating almost exclusively on secondary points in those creeks out there. Um, and my techniques can vary. It can be it could be something as, I could throw a wiggle ward on the point and maybe catch a few. I could get out, out off the point or 10 or 15 feet of water. I might catch one on a, on a, on a jerk bait or an Alabama rig out there. I might get out in 20, 25 foot of water and catch one on a little swim bait on the same point. So <clears throat> on the same point, I might catch one on a crank bait, one on a jerk bait, and one on a little swim bait in lots of different depths out there. This is a really good way to locate fish quickly in the early part of the winter. Just run those secondary points in those major creek arms out there. And also, if you have any structure out there that is on a uh, little bit steeper banks, you know, like lay down trees or docks or something like that, sometimes in the early part of the year, they will like wood structures. And another thing about that is in the early part of the winter, I try to find, I don't want the cleanest water that I can find. I, if, if, if I go to into that creek, and let's say, for example, I have, you know, four foot of visibility at the mouth of the creek and at the back of the creek, I've got a foot and a half or two foot of visibility. I want to be in that little bit more off colored water. That's going to keep those fish shallow. And as long as that water temperature is anything over, four, you know, 47, 48 degrees, they're still going to be pretty active with that. Now, as that water temperature drops down to its coldest point in the mid part of January, that's when I start leaving those creeks and I go out to the main lake and I fish the same type of structures. Again, I'm staying on main lake points and every lake's got them. Some lakes got more than others out there. Um, but there, the, in my opinion, the majority of the non live scope fish in the month of January are going to be living in and around those main lake points. The, the degree of slope is a little bit different. I mean, they can change from point to point. If you don't have a lake that has a lot of points in it, some lakes don't have very many points, then concentrate on your steeper banks. If you got bluff banks or if you got channel banks, 
concentrate on the steepest banks that drop off sharply um, into that deeper water if you don't have many points out there. But you're gonna find during that time of year that um, those fish are gonna be deeper and there's gonna be more suspended fish at its coldest point. And a lot of it has to, to do with where the shad's at. And the shad is, it's a very critical element in the middle of the winter. And this is something you can find strictly with your 2D sonar. Shad schools are easy to find just on a, on a, on a low dollar 2D sonar unit. And one of my favorite techniques in the dead of the winter is I try to graph around those points a little bit, say in 10 to 20, maybe 30 foot of water, depending upon the water clarity. And I try to get a feel for the depth of the shad. And that sort of gives me a clue to where, how deep I need to be fishing. If I'm not seeing much shad suspended out there, then I tend to fish the bottom, like with dragging a football head jig, maybe throwing a Ned rig. If I start seeing shad suspended or on the bottom or at different column depths, then I'll fish, you know, my baits to try to get down to those depths that the shad are at. But for the most part, I'm gonna be on the main lake uh, structures that. And then again, in the late uh, winter, um, that's when those fish start to make a transition back into the creek arms again. It's, it's the same type of deal. They get on those secondary points in late winter uh, in those major creeks, but there's more fish that starts to move that start to move to those steeper channel banks in late winter. So let's say for example, in early winter, 75% of the fish in those creeks were on the secondary points. In late winter, you're gonna have 50% on the secondary points and 50% on the steepest banks within those creeks. That's gonna be a really good way to catch them. And we're not gonna talk that much, guys, about technique in this particular video. We're gonna talk about where to locate those fish are. The, the techniques can vary widely. The, and techniques are gonna, are gonna vary based upon, again, your water clarity and water temperatures. But um, this, you know, I can, I'll give you some examples of what works good, but I don't wanna go into a lot of detail. During early and mid winter, early, mid and late winter, your key winter lures are gonna be like crawdad crankbaits, jerk baits, uh, varying, varying different sizes of swim baits, normally smaller ones. Alabama rigs are gonna be really good. There might be some vertical fishing like with an ice jig or a spoon or something like that. Um, and there's some outliers like chatter baits and spinner baits under certain situations. But for the most part, the swim bait and the uh, jerk bait and the Alabama, Alabama rig are gonna do most of your heavy lifting uh, to locate fish during that time of the year. So I'm gonna take a quick break guys and I'll be back and we're gonna get into the spring season, how to locate fish in the spring. Okay guys, we're back with the second part of the uh, locating bass. We're gonna be talking about the spring season. Now the spring season has three seasons within the spring season, just like we talked about early spring, mid spring and late spring. And out of all the seasons, as far as winter, spring, summer, and fall, the, 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 the amount of change that occurs in early, mid and late spring is probably more radical than any other time of the year. There's a lot going on during the spring time of the year. So I'll sort of get into how I locate bass during that, th this situation here. Now, First of all, um, how do you classify the spring time of the year? Um, that's going to be, it, it's going to be early, mid, or late, or, or some people refer to it as the pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. Now, a lot of this, again, every, everything that we're talking about is, it has to do with your water temperature. For the most part, I consider the, the pre-spawn period of the year uh, triggered by two different factors. No, number one, it's triggered by the longer daylight hours, um, which you know, after December 22nd, we start getting lighter a little bit every day. And then correlation with the water temperatures. I consider spring, this the early pre-spawn spring season, starting when that water temperature first starts to get maybe about five to 10 degrees above its coldest point. So say for example, here in Missouri, you know, we usually have our water temperature bottom out around upper 30s or around 40 degrees in the middle of the winter. So here I consider spring start. And if I go out and I see 50 degree water temperature right off the bat when I get in the lake in the morning, that is, I consider that the start of the spring pre-spawn season. When you're talking about water temperature guys in the spring time of the year, don't get sucked into paying attention to water temperature that you see in the afternoon. The real water temperature is what you see right off the bat in the morning. That's an indication more of the, 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 the stage that the fish are in. You can, get, you can get one of those days where that water temperature warms up five or 10 degrees in the back of the cove if you got sun baking down on it, but it could be cold out on the main lake. So 
try to take your water temperature readings in a little bit deeper water or, or areas that aren't in the back of shallow areas right off the bat in the morning. So it's sort of indicative of that. So for me here in Missouri, usually starts when it gets around 50 degrees. <clears throat> this is the best time of year to fish also. The pre-spawn early spring, in my opinion, it's my favorite time of year to fish. I think there's more big fish up shallow this time of year than any other time. And I'll sort of get into a little bit how I look for them here. Now, when I'm looking for fish in the early pre-spawn, a lot of it has to do, again, with the mix of bass that you have in a lake. The more of a mixture, of a, of a equal mixture of bass that you have, like largemouth spotted bass and smallmouth, the more you're gonna have those fish scattered out throughout the lake. It's like, you, you're if you have a big spotted bass or smallmouth lake, there's gonna be a lot of options to find fish during the early spring on the main lake and in the creeks both. But if you have a lake that has a predominant largemouth population, you're gonna do a lot better in your creek arms, you know, right off the bat in the early spring with that. But the structures are pretty much the same. In the early spring, um, it's all about um, those fish migrating to those staging areas. Now the staging areas um, vary based upon the slope and the angles of the bank that you have in the lake. But for the most part, on most traditional man-made lakes, the staging areas are what I classify as the steeper banks that are adjacent to spawning areas, flatter areas. So what you want to look for is if you go back, I don't care if you're on the main lake or if you're on a creek or something like that, the areas you want to look for to locate bass are those areas where you have a visual transition of like a bluff or a steep bank that runs for a distance that leads into some coves that tend to flatten out in the back a little bit. Those are perfect staging areas for early spring. Those fish will get on those steeper banks and the points that are connected to those steeper banks, and they'll stay there for several weeks during that pre-spawn when that water temperature is slowly starting to warm up into the 50s. And again, they use a variety of different depths based upon the water clarity again. You still have some fish suspending, just like you did in the winter, you got some fish shallow, but for the most part, during the early spring, whatever fish are suspending shallow, or whatever fish are still suspending, they're suspending a little bit shallower and the fish are using shallower water. So when that water temperature starts to get around 50 degrees, there's gonna be a lot of fish in the lake that are like in less than five foot of water, regardless of your water clarity out there. There's gonna be, also there's gonna be fish that are a little bit behind or maybe a little bit ahead. So let's say, for example, if you've got 50, 52 degree water temperature, you've got some bass that are up on those channel banks, ready to stage, they're feeding up, they're ready to move up to spawn. You may have another population that's hanging back in a little bit deeper water and they're not quite ready to move up there. And you may have some that are already on their way to those flatter areas to look for key bedding areas. So, you know, you got a lot of fish coming and going in that situation, but the main thing you want to look for to locate bass in the early spring are those transition areas from steep to flat. If you have a lake that has a lot of grass in it, say you guys fish some of the Texas lakes like Sam Rayburn, this is the perfect time of year to fish those grass flat edges that have ditches running through them. Those ditches are like staging areas for those fish to get ready to move up on the shallower flats to spawn as well. Now this is going to last up until the water temperature starts to get in the upper 50s or around 60 degrees. For the most part, bass will start moving into the spawning areas to either scout for areas for beds or to start bedding or to start building beds, to just looking. Males and females both, once that water temperature starts to get around 50 degrees um, and, you, and you start, especially once it starts getting around 60 degrees and you've got maybe a full moon or a new moon coming out, there's gonna be a lot of fish that begin to move shallow in those spawning areas out there. And this is the easiest time of year to find them, guys. It's like in the, when the water temperature hits 60, there's going to be more bass in less than five foot of water as far as all different sizes of bass than any other time of the year. Usually it's, it's March or April or May, depending upon what part of the country you're in. It's April here in Missouri, for example. Give you guys a prime example of what to look for. Every single cove on the lake is gonna have some bass in it probably. It doesn't matter if it's on the main lake, it doesn't matter if it's in a creek or whatever. I tend to prefer to stay in the creeks. I think there's larger populations of fish that live in that zone during the month of April. Also, they get a little bit heavier fishing pressure. 
but you can you can do just as good on the on the main lake coves as too. The areas that you want to look for is you need coves that start to flatten out a little bit about halfway back in there. Fish need the bass can spawn on anything. Don't, they don't have to have the perfect scenario to spawn on, but they prefer to spawn on some type of a hard bottom, preferably gravel. I've seen them. I've seen them spawn on solid rock. I've seen them spawn on stumps. I've seen them spawn on tires. I've seen them spawn everywhere. But if they had their rathers, they're going to spawn on gravelly type areas um, that are catching a lot of sun, that are protected from the wind, and a lot of times that are next to some type of object, especially bigger fish. Bigger fish don't like to spawn just out in the open. Bigger fish, if they don't have something to spawn next to, like a boat dock pier or a stump or you know something in the water, they're usually spawning in deeper water to get away from the pressure out there. So depending upon your water clarity, um, areas that you wanna to look to locate the fish are gonna be anywhere between two to maybe 10 feet deep. If you've got a real clear lake, those fish could spawn as deep as 10 feet or maybe more, um, but look for those flat or gravelly areas. Now in late spring, during the post-spawn phase, it's the cycle just reverses. There's gonna be, again, several different populations of fish in the post-spawn, which is normally signaled by when that water temperature starts to get like in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees, which is in May in most part of the countries, so maybe April if you're down south like that. There, the reverse happens. Those fish start to move out of those type of spawning areas, back out to the secondary points leading into the spawning areas, and then they begin dispersing. But this dispersal that takes place during that time of year is a very unpredictable thing because you may have some bass that live back in these spawning coves for another month or two. They get back in there, they guard fry. If the area has some cover, they stand there and feed up on bluegills and perch and crawdads. Um, they may not have any reason to leave. Some of them will leave immediately. Some of them will, some of them will just pull out in deeper water next to their bedding areas and they'll stay out there for a couple weeks. Some of them will move out to the main lake or the main creek areas. Let me give you guys a prime example of what I'm talking about here. I was fishing a tournament down at, I was practicing for a tournament down at Table Rock Lake. Um, this, this was a uh, early, yeah, it was an April tournament and I had a chance to practice for like six days for this tournament. The first day of practice I went down there, I found a bass that was on a bed. It was about a five pounder and, and this fish, it was unique because it had a black spot right on top of its head and it was actually spawning with a male next to this stump on just a gradual sloping bank back in a creek arm like that. And I you know, didn't mess with it because I, I wanted to catch it in the tournament. So anyway, I went um, back in the tournament, the first day of the tournament, and the fish was gone. I didn't see it in there. So it's like, dang it. So I just fished on down through there and I was, I was catching a few here and there. And the last day of the tournament, the second day of the tournament, I went right back to that area where I saw that fish on the bed and I was, I was, the fish was gone, but I was just making long casts with a crankbait out in about 10 or 15 feet of water, you know, out off those bedding areas. And guys, I caught that same fish right out in front of that stump in about 15 feet of water. I know it was the same fish because it was a five pounder with a black spot on its head. That fish had been around that stump all week long. It spawned on that stump and moved out in like 10 to 15 feet of water just to recuperate after it had spawned. So that's a prime example of it. So um, anyway, guys, that, it's just a reverse. I mean, look for those areas. One of my favorite areas in the post spawn, you can't go wrong with points, uh, dragging a football head jig, dragging a swing head jig, something like that, a shaky head, fishing any of those secondary points leading out of those spawning areas is a really good way to catch them during the post spawn. You can catch a lot of fish if you've got a lake that has a little bit more off-colored water, like on a swim jig, back in those spawning coves for those fish that live back in there. But um, the, during the post-spawn, guys, the fish are usually active. They're biting, they're hungry from spawning, and they're all over the place. So anyway, that's that. We'll be back in a second, and we'll get into summer here. Okay, guys, let's move along to how to locate bass during the summer months. Um, now, one thing that I forgot to mention that I want to include in the late spring season as far as locating fish the late spring, guys, like specifically the month of May and even into early June a little bit, even into early summer a little bit, this is the best time of year to flip flooded cover. And this is usually when a lake has a lot of flooded cover in it. 
So if you have a lake that, that, uh, that the water comes up and down a lot where you get flooded you know, willow trees and bushes and other type of trees in the water, take advantage of that. And the thing about um, fishing as far as where flooded cover is, one of the things that you'll find about when a lake comes up in May and June, the fish will disperse literally anywhere where that flooded cover exists especially um, if it's not everywhere. If you have a lake that has just flooded cover everywhere, again, stay in your stay in and around those, those areas where those fish are either spawning or coming out to spawn, like your creeks and coves and stuff like that. Um, but if you've got flooded cover in late spring, you need to pick up that flipping stick and get to it because that's the my favorite time to flip and pitch. Okay guys, how to locate bass in the summertime. Again, like I said, there's not one scenario that you can apply to everything. Again, it all depends on that magical water clarity. It depends on water level a little bit. One thing you will find out in the summer months is that water temperature is probably the least important than any other time of the year. I don't, I don't pay any attention to water temperature in the summertime. I, it doesn't make any difference to me because I don't care if the water is 75 degrees or if it's 100 degrees those fish are gonna still use the same water in the summertime of the year. So this is one time of the year where to me, water temperature is irrelative. In terms of locating fish in the summertime, specific pieces of structure, the type of structure that you have in the lake is more critical than any other time of year because in the summertime, I really think this is when the fish use object oriented pieces of structure more than any time of the year with the exception of those super clear water lakes that have a lot of smallmouth or spotted bass in it where they tend to suspend. And those fish will continue to spend throughout the summer. But in a typical man-made impoundment out there, um, you're gonna have fish relating to cover in various depth ranges, depending upon when and how deep the thermocline forms. If you're not familiar with the thermocline, it's the layer of a lake on, not all lakes, but some lakes where the, uh, the temperature mixes to such a degree where you don't have much oxygen under a certain point. That's why in the summertime, you don't have fish that use that super deep water like you will in the wintertime and the fall time when you don't have thermoclines, when you have more oxygen down there. So for me, as far as how I locate bass in the summertime, um, it has to do with what part of the summer I'm fishing. I do, even though I'm an anti live scoper guys, I have spent a ton of time fishing deep water. And I don't associate fishing deep structure with any type of technology uh, issue out there because I was fishing deep structure with a, with a, with a flasher, with just a, a, a hummingbird super 60 flasher. And there were guys fishing deep structure in the 60s and 70s with no depth finder. They just throw their lure out there and try to figure out how deep the water was. So you can do that with traditional bass fishing means. So. The first place I look to, when I, well, first of all, when I talk about summer, so I classify summer as June, July, and August. Those are the three months out there. The month of June, guys, you will find this is some of the best deep structure fishing you're gonna have all year long. I'm not talking about going deep for like the live scope type fish. I'm talking about fish that are in that 10 to 25 foot range that are relating to hard structure. Hard structure like drop-offs, rock piles, brush piles, that type of stuff. After those fish spawn, the place that you're going to find the biggest fish on the lake is when they move out to those post-spawn deeper areas. Now, this can be a lot of different type of areas depending upon the lake you're fishing. If you fish a Tennessee Valley River Lake like Kentucky Lake, it could be on the ledges, the, that, the offshore river ledges. If you fish a lake like Table Rock Lake, Grand Lake in my part of the country, it can be you know, subtle drop-offs or deeper brush piles. Every lake has deeper structure that those fish will relate to. But one of the, my favorite times and one of my easiest and simplest ways to locate fish during the early summer is to take a big deep diving crankbait and just cover main lake and secondary points out there. I don't care if they're steep or if they're flat or whatever, I just run and gun points with that big crankbait. I try to concentrate on that sort of that seven to 20 foot zone and you don't necessarily even have to have structure. You can have a clean bottom, as long as it's a point, a type of a, of a post-spawn recuperation area. June is an excellent month for that. You know, specifically the first, second, third week of June. Now, once you start to get towards later June and into July, again, those fish will disperse. In early June, those fish can be schooled up out there in big schools sometimes. And um, 
football head jig or a big crankbait, you know, in on those main points in June is one of my favorite ways to catch them. Even if the water's high, I, guys, if you have some, if you have some of those pretty willow trees and buck brush to flip in June, there's still going to be more and bigger fish deeper for some reason. You can still catch them flipping, but you know, I always go deep the first part of June. Now, once the end of June rolls around and you get into July and August, I move shallower and shallower and shallower is where I locate the fish at. And this time of year, for me, it's all about finding off colored water. I, the way I locate fish in the summertime of, of July and August specifically is whatever lake I'm going to, I'll look at a map or I'll look at a Google Earth or something like that. And I try to find the dirtiest water in the lake. And I go to those areas and I fish whatever available shallow cover that there is. I don't care if it's rock, riprap, docks, wood, whatever. I'm in that dirty water fishing the shallow targets and I'm doing it very slow and methodically. Um, pitching and flipping, I'm fishing spinner baits, fishing square bill crank baits, maybe buzz bait in certain situations. And specifically what I do to locate my fish in the summertime of the year is I'll go into the river arms of the lake. That's normally where your dirtier water is. And I just fish whatever's there. It's like, I'll put the trolling motor down and I'll fish a little bit on a steep bank. I'll move across and fish the flat bank. I'll go in the back of the cut. I'll go out on the main river part of it. I just sort of mix it up a little bit until I start getting a few bites and figuring out what those fish are at. And a little piece of advice I'll give you guys for summer fishing as far as to locate them is if you have shallow cover and you have off colored water and you have bait fish that are visible <clears throat> in that area, there's bass in that area. Problem you're gonna have in the summertime of the year is a lot of those shallow fish are inactive. That's why your casting angle and your casting presentation and the uh, way that you retrieve your lure is critical to triggering strikes. Normally in the summertime, you're relying on more of a reaction strike. That's why your spinner baits and your crank baits and you know, stuff like that are gonna be more effective, especially fishing them a little bit faster around those shallow targets. It's gonna be really good. Um, <clears throat> there's some other oddball places that you can find fish too. One, one sort of oddball, oddball, oddball pattern, way to catch some fish and to find some fish in the middle of the summer of July and August, is to fish deep um, commercial docks or marina docks. There's always schools of fish that live underneath those marina docks or those commercial docks in any lake out there. And it doesn't matter what your water visibility is. It can be a dirty lake, it can be a clean lake. Those fish suspend around those deep docks in the summertime. Um, I think a lot of shad live there. There's a lot of algae that grows on those docks. It keeps the shad there, it keeps the bass there. Um, I catch a ton of fish in the summertime on marina docks and commercial docks. Now you don't catch many good ones. That's the thing about it. It's like, if you catch one, if you catch a four pounder, that's pretty rare, but it's a good way to catch just a lot of keepers in there. So main thing guys about the summertime, and I, this is one, the summer is sort of a, it's one of those periods, it's, it's the season that has the least definitive seasons within a season. We're talking about, when you talk about early, mid and late summer, with the exception of a very, very early summer, fishing deep in the first part of June, they sort of just all blend together. But my advice for fishing in the summer is go deep, fish your deep points the first couple weeks of June, and then move shallow. Look for your, your dirtiest water that you can find and just and fish your typical old school shallow water fishing techniques. It's a really good way to catch them still. Um, it's always gonna be, as long as you've got bait fish up there, there's always gonna be a population of fish to be caught in there. So we'll take a short break guys and we'll wrap it up with the fall months here just in a second. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, we're gonna wrap it up here with the fall time of the year. You're gonna get back into the uh, three different distinct seasons within fall. And um, one of the things about this that I want to reiterate here before we get into this last segment is that um, bass fishing is hard. Bass fishing is the most difficult sport that there is because you simply have so many variables. Now, when I'm when I'm sitting here trying to teach you guys about you know where to how and where to locate bass, I'm just skimming the surface because I really th this is a seminar that I really can't do the way it needs to be done unless you break down each specific lake because every lake out there the lake that you guys fish wherever you all live at there is there's there's unique characteristics about that one lake that is different from any other lake in the country same with my lakes lakes here so to be done correctly as far as for me to tell you correctly how to locate fish quickly 
I would have to know exactly what lake you fish on, and then I could address that a lot better when I have the information, like the mix of species, the water clarity, the cover that you have, the uh, angles of the bank, the tint of the water, um, just everything. There's a li uh, an endless list of variables that determine how you're gonna locate fish. But the main thing is you got to start somewhere. So I'm hoping that this seminar gives you sort of a starting point. And then once you get out there and you try some of these areas, then you can sort of maybe uh, modify it to your own specific lake out there. So this is a broad overview of it. But also I wanna reiterate guys is, um, if you're on the path, like I hope a lot of you are of traditional bass fishing, without the live scoping out there, that you really, really spend your time focusing on bass movement and behavior and the things like that we're gonna talk about today. If you, I know those aren't flashy, they're, they're boring, they're, like I said, it's like getting it, it's like sitting in a classroom, but if you spend your energy and the time that you have focusing on this, you're gonna get so much better so much quicker. So I just, I always have to say that because like I said, nobody really wants to watch these type of videos because it's literally like sitting in a classroom in school or something. Okay, let's get into the fall a little bit. Three different seasons. Now, fall, I consider fall September, November, excuse me, September, October, and November. What you're going to find is there's not much difference in how to locate a bass in September versus August. Um, a lot of times we have 100, like here in Missouri, we have 100 degree days in the middle of September, so you don't have any type of environmental water clarity change or anything that's changing at all other than the daylight hours are getting a little bit shorter. <clears throat> so for the most part, everything that you find that you're, that's working for you guys in July and August is going to continue to work into September out there. There's not going to be much difference as far as the location of those fish. The thing that makes a move for the fish and, and when, when there's a transition in the fish out there is when you first start noticing those first couple, um, the, the first couple harder cold fronts that come through. Now, a lot of times by middle or late October, you get one of those hard cold fronts that come in where the, water, where the air temperature um, gets down in the 30s or 40s or something like that at night. And usually what happens, this is the way it goes, or at least does in my part of the country, it'll be warm, 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 like in September, and you say, and you think that, Fall's never going to get here. And then all, all of a sudden you get one of those northern or fronts pull, push through and you get a cold night. It never recuperates. It just, it seems like when that first front comes through that really cools things off in October, then that just perpetuates that cooling cycle a little bit. And that's when you start noticing um, a change in the location where you need to look for these fish at. Now you've heard this there, there's been a myth in bass fishing that was perpetuated a lot in the 80s and 90s that in the fall time of the year, you need to go to the back of the creeks because the bait fish goes to the back of the creeks. I've heard, that's what I heard my whole upbringing. You hear it all the time. Guys, I think that's one of the biggest myths in fishing out there. In my opinion, the backs of the creeks are some of the least productive areas that I can fish in the fall time of the year. I, I stay out of them almost all the time. One of the things that I have found in the fall time of the year that has been really productive to me that sort of goes against the grain a little bit is I look for my bass in the fall time of the year, which I consider true fall being in October, once that water temperature starts cooling down into the 60s, something like that, I stay on the main lake. I think for whatever reason, I have caught so many more fish fishing main lake structures or main lake coves and avoiding the creek arms. I, it's just, I, I know there's fish in those creek arms, but it seems like the catchable fish to me, the way that, the way that I like to fish, the main lake is a lot better with that. So first thing that you'll notice in the fall fishing, what you really need to look for is to locate these fish is the, the, the sky conditions as far as the light intensity and the wind associated with that is super, super critical in the fall time of the year. Um, fall time of the year is a really good time to fish reaction baits and jigs both based upon, you know, the structure you're fishing. I catch a ton of fish on big jigs in the fall, and I also catch a ton of fish on reaction lures like crankbaits and topwaters and spinnerbaits and, and chatterbaits in the fall time of the year based upon the structure that I'm fishing. But regardless, I'm fishing 
a, a, most all that stuff on the main lake areas. Now, the main lake area, it can be anywhere on the lake. It doesn't have to be, you know, just because I'm on the main lake doesn't have to mean that I'm in clear water down by the dam. It can be on the main, the, the main body that I'm talking about can be like in a river arm or it can be uh, up the lake a little bit where it narrows down. You know, there's gonna be varying degrees of water clarity, but I like to stay and fish whatever cover is available on the main lake. One of the first things that I that I look for in the fall time of the year is, um, you know, in October and November both, is if there's any boat docks on the lake that are on the main lake, I'm fishing boat docks on the main lake. This is this is one of the quickest, best ways to locate bass in a hurry in October and November, especially if the water's falling. Now, this happens a lot in the fall time of the year. A lot of times they start drawing lakes down, like in August and September. And in my part of the country here, when you get into October and November, we got some pretty low water conditions. And if you can find docks out on the main lake that um, have any type of water depth on them at all, those are bass magnets, man. I catch a ton of fish off of main lake docks in October and November. The next thing I like to fish, um, once that water temperature starts getting down in the 50s and 60s, again, we're talking about October and November, um, they can, they, they can be a big change in them or they can be very similar based upon your weather patterns. But windy, wind-driven banks and points with shade is another great area to locate bass on. One of, one of my biggest tricks in October and November fishing is to run the shade, run the shade lines. Now, what I look for is based upon the bank, how a bank is positioned on the lake that you're fishing, there are going to be banks that hold shade for a long time. Some of these banks, they'll hold a shade line up until 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Look for those shade lines, guys, on the main lake, especially if you got some type of wind coming in on them. Take a moving bait like a spinner bait or a crank bait and cover water in that shade. It's a great way to catch them, especially on a swim bait or a spinner bait or something like that. One of my favorite ways to catch bass of all time is to run shade lines in October, November on windy banks with a spinnerbait, fishing the spinnerbait real fast, covering water. Those fish react to a shade line the same way they would react to a, like a cloudy day or something. And since the angle of the sun is getting lower and lower and lower in October and November, you've got more opportunities to fish these shade lines. So when you're running down the lake on the main lake, you know, say for example, you get out on the water at eight or nine o'clock in the morning, just run down the lake and start looking for those banks that are catching a lot of shade, especially if you got some points too. Shady points are money. They're like guaranteed fish almost in the fall time of the year if you got some shade and some wind on them. Um, those are two big factors for finding fish, guys, shade and wind. And it even overshadows the type of bank or structure you're fishing. It's like, you may, you may for example, you may look at like a, a really neat looking rock transition. Say you've got a steep bank that's got some broken rock on it that transitions into like a gravel bank or something, just a typical bass magnet. If there's sun on that bank, it's not going to be as productive as some nothing looking bank that has shade on it. Fish hunt out that shade a lot in the fall time of the year, especially if the water's low where you don't have a lot of cover in the water. So that's one of my favorite ways to locate bass right there. Next thing that I like to do this time of year, again with low water, is I run isolated wood targets. Now this is a really productive way to catch them and you can locate fish really quick doing this because a lot of people don't want to go out of the way to fish one log in the water or one lay down tree. One of my tricks in bass fishing, and it has been forever, is I'll say I'll be running down the lake, I, you know, whether it be up the river or main lake or whatever, and if I'm running down a bank and I see one tree, one tree or one log laying in the water, I whip over there and fish it because most people will not take the time to go over and fish one piece of wood that's in the water. Most people, they you got to think in the mentality they're looking for. They want to sit down on a bank that's got a lot of wood on it, like where they can put the trolling motor down and fish for 20 or 30 minutes and stay in, stay in targets the whole time. Never pass up isolated targets. If you got an isolated dock where there's just one dock by itself, hit it. If you got an isolated pole sticking out of the water, hit it. An isolated stump or log or whatever it is out there, isolated structure in October and November when that water's low is a great way to locate fish super quick out there. Now, um, 
I, if once October gets here, guys, I don't hardly ever go back into the creeks. And if I do, it's going to be a major creek that's almost like a part of the main lake itself. But um, this is one time of the year that I don't like fishing up skinny water. I want to be fishing areas that have some type of access to deep water. Um, I don't, I'm not necessarily concerned about the cover as much as I am with the wind and the shade. And some of my top baits that time of year is like that Magdraft swim bait, spinner bait, walking top water, whopper plopper, in dirty water, a lipless crankbait can really can be really good that time of year. And fishing a jig around any type of wood target, a full size jig, not a finesse jig, flip, 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 flipping and pitching it around any wood targets out there like that. So anyway, guys, that's just a, a brief overview of how to locate some fish real quick based upon different times of the year. There's so much, there's so much information out there that I left out here, but we'll over the foreseeable future, kept moving up guys. I'll try to, I'll try to do some seminars specifically on specific things. Like I'll try to do a seminar, like just a, how to catch fish in April. And we'll go into detail how to catch fish in, in, you know, August. And we'll go into detail on that. So but anyway, I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope it helps you guys catch a few more fish and uh, appreciate you guys tuning in for the seminar. And please take a chance to visit my uh, links in the description of this video. Um, if you want to order any tackle from Tackle Warehouse or anything, it's a good way to help the channel out. So much appreciated.